Welcome to the Known Victory Church YouTube channel. We are so glad that you found us today. We exist to make Jesus known and to be a place that anyone can call home. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe, like, and share these messages so we can truly make Jesus known in our homes, cities, and across the world. We pray that this message impacts you and helps you to grow closer to Jesus. But I'm excited uh, for today. Um, you know, like Beth said, we're in this series um, that we've called Real and Restored Relationships. And the past two Sundays, we've kind of gone through two types of relationships. Um, one would be if you're single and you're, or you're dating, that's for you. Seven myths, we went through seven myths of, of relationships. And I really encourage you, if you missed it, really, you know, go back and listen to it. I think something in there that might be able to speak to you. And then last week was amazing. You know, last week we did an interview with a couple in our church, uh, Jeff and Joanna, and it was a super, super powerful Sunday. Um, so again, if you missed that one too, I'm telling you, go back and listen to it. There's a lot of depth in that. But uh, today we're going to continue. We're going to talk about parenting today. And, uh, you know, this is such an interesting topic, parenting, because I don't know if you've ever been on the internet. It's this thing that you go to. There's a lot of information on it. If you haven't heard of it, you should go to it. It's really cool. Um, but the internet... Uh, there's, there's a lot on there, and there's a lot of different opinions on parenting, right? You, you've probably noticed this. And all of us have different relationships with parenting. Some of us, we are kids to a parent, right? And others of us, we are parents to a kid. But we all have a relationship with parenting in some capacity, whether it's to our parents or it's to our children. We all are in a space where we have had parents. Uh, whether they were good or bad, we've all had parents in our lives. And I think the older that I get, the more appreciation that I have for my parents, because I'm a parent now, and I realize how hard sometimes being a parent is. And how hard it is to be patient and kind and gentle. When I'm asking her, my daughter, to do that, I'm like, that's hard for me to even do. And being a parent, again, the older I get, I think the more grateful I am for my parents because they didn't, you know, when you leave a hospital, they don't give you the handbook, like the parenting handbook 101. They don't give you that. They just send you away with a human being and say, good luck, right? Like, that's it. There's no like, there's no like, here, let me teach you how to be a parent. It's like, you're on your own, go home. And it's funny because before you have a baby, and you, you know this, everyone is always so excited for you, right? Like, oh, that's the best news. You were so excited. You're going to have a baby. But nobody really is honest with you about how hard sometimes it is. It's like, they're just excited that the belly's growing and there's a baby growing and there's a healthy baby. And then as soon as you have a baby, they're like, ha, 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 we tricked you. We tricked you. It's not easy. It's a bundle of joy. Sometimes, other times it's not. It's a bundle of poop, right? Like, to be honest, like, it's not easy all the time to have, being a parent. And there's a lot of different opinions on, and I think we all have embarrassing moments as parents. <laughs> like, really embarrassing moments. Like, this is, this is a true story. Beth and I, like, one of the first times we ever took Jane, Jane on an adventure, and she was, like, under, like, she may have been, like, a month old. I don't remember. But we, we get to our destination. It wasn't far, okay? I'll be honest. It wasn't very far. And we look back, and we forgot to buckle her in. Like a true story. So she's in, like, her baby bucket, and we just went on our merry old way. Good thing it didn't hit the brakes very hard. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's an embarrassing moment for me. And I think we all have moments where they're embarrassing or that we regret as, as parents that sometimes we don't like to talk about. Some of the times where we reacted or said things or did things that we really wish we could take back, and we all know we can't change the past. But parenting can be very hard, and the Bible is filled with a lot of wisdom when it comes to parenting. Um, the Bible is filled with a lot of scriptures that really help us navigate uh, as parents um, when it comes to how do we raise our kids well? How do we raise them? Uh, and this one verse, I think, you know, it's pretty popular, and you, maybe you've heard this verse before. But I want to spend our time in this, in this main verse. And this is what it is. It's Proverbs 22, verse 6. This is really the, the main responsibility of a parent. This is what it is. It's to train up a child in the way they sh he should go. And he, even when he is old, he will not depart from it, right? This is the main responsibility for us as parents, is to train up our children in the way that they should go. So that way, when they're old, they do not depart from it. And I don't know if anyone's a Star Wars fan. Have you ever watched The Mandalorian? Anyone? You, you don't need to pretend. Like, it's okay. It's like, you've seen it. It's okay. In the, in the Mandalorian, there's this, like, saying where they say, yeah, there's the cutest ever TV thing in The Mandalorian, by the way. The cutest ever being. Anyway, it's a sidetrack. But in the, in the Mandalorian, there's this saying. It's like, this is the way, right? 
And, and it's interesting as parents, when we look at our own parenting, this is really has to be our motto is we need to train up our kids in the way that they should go. But the way that they should go is not our way. It's not our will. It's God's will. And so the way that they should go might not be the way that sometimes you wish they would go. But we're supposed to train them up. And how do we train them up? It's based on our relationship with Jesus first. The closer that we can get to the Father, we're going to see our kids are going to see us and start mirroring how we behave towards Jesus. We need to train up our kids in the way that they should go. And we need to know the way. Because if we're wandering on aimlessly ourselves, good luck trying to get your kids to go on the right path. All right, this, is, this is the motto for us as people. And this morning I want to go through three things that training needs in order to be successful and effective. How do we train our kids well? Because if the motto is train up your kids in the way they should go, train up your children in the way they should go so they do not depart from it, we need to figure out how do we actually train our kids, right? We need to figure out how, what does training look like? How do we train our kids? And one thing you need to know, training is not easy. Have you ever tried to train for something? It's not easy at all. Even like study for a final, like it's not easy. Training is painful. But the reward is worth the sacrifice when it comes to training. And so the number one thing that training needs is training needs a purpose. We have to actually know the purpose of what we're training for. And if you ever talk to someone who's training for something specific, maybe they're training for a marathon or they're training to become a firefighter or they're you know, going to school to become a nurse. There's a lot of training that takes place in order to be qualified or ready to actually do it. I can't wake up tomorrow and run a marathon. First of all, I don't want to. I see people, they run these triathlons and decathlons. And I'm like, I don't even know if that's humanly possible. Like, I'm telling you, I look at them, I'm like, the training needed in order to actually accomplish those things is unbelievable. It's painful. It's really, really hard. But training needs a purpose. We need to know what the purpose of our training is. Because we, we train only when we know where we're going. The purpose for our child is not to make you feel better. It's not to add significance to your life. The purpose of your child is not to build your self-esteem. The purpose of your child is to love and serve Jesus. That's the purpose of your child is, is to love and serve Jesus. It's not about what we want. It's about what God wants in their life. And I think as parents, the hardest part about training our kids is actually trusting God to take care of them. It's one of the hardest things is actually trusting God to take care of our children. Why is it hard? Because we're giving up control. And when our, when our kids, they see us trusting God with, with their life. And I'm not saying just like abandon them, but like good luck. That's what I'm saying. That's horrible. Don't do that. But do you trust God with your kids? Because again, their purpose is not to make you feel better. Their purpose is to follow Jesus. The way is following Jesus. The way is not following you and taking over the family business. That is not the way. It's not about what you need from them. What it is, it's about you training them for the purpose of glorifying God. So in every action, everything that we do in relationship with our kids, it has to be about how are we going to honor God in this moment? How am I going to show my child God's love in this moment? Do you know what's really hard to do is show God's love in a moment where you're very angry, Right? Whoo! How many moments have we had where we've messed up because we were angry? Where we didn't honor our children because they made us upset, right? We need to know the purpose of it. And when we look at what the way is, is John 14, 6, right? This is when Jesus is talking. He says this. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Jesus is the way. He is the way. So if we want to actually train our kids in the way they should go, the way is Jesus. So how do we train our kids to become fully devoted followers of Jesus? There's nothing you can sacrifice. There's nothing that you can do to make your children follow Jesus. There's nothing that you can do. I mean, you can do your best to raise them and train them, but they're going to get to a point where they're going to have to make that decision for themselves. You can never sacrifice enough for them to follow him. You can never be good enough for them to follow him. You can never do it on your own. They have to have it in their moment. So how do you train them? The purpose, the way you start to walk in it yourself. If you want to actually see your kids follow Jesus, you better be, you better be showing them how to at home. 
You better be showing them how to read the Bible. You better be teaching them how to pray. You better be showing them the way that that is Jesus. You better be showing them. That's the only thing we can do is mirror God's love and walk in the way and pray and try and pull them to be a part of it as well. He is the way. The only way to purpose, the only way to life, the only way to the Father is through Jesus. It's not through you. Jesus is the only way to the parter and to the father. And I think, again, the hardest part of being a parent is trusting God with our kids. Trusting God to protect them and trusting God to love them as much as us. But the reality is that God loves your kids astronomically more than you do. And that's really hard to believe, right? Because sometimes, like I, when I first had Jay, I'm telling you, I'd just be walking and I'd look and I'd see her face and I'd just start crying. I was like, I've never felt so much love. Like, I love Beth, but it's, like, different with a kid, you know? <laughs> Sorry, there's, don't say that, okay? I'm talking to myself. Okay? Don't say those things. <laughs> Sorry. I just, I get this, when I'm talking, I get these, like, random thoughts in my mind. I'm like, no, no, don't. <laughs> anyway. Whew. But let's get back to the thought. The reality is God loves your kids astronomically more than you do. You know, I've never taken the time personally to count how many hairs are on Jane's head. Never have. It's a lot of time. God knows that. That's information. That's something God actually spends his time doing is counting our hairs. Seems like a waste of time. But it's because he cares so deeply. He loves your kids more than you do. And we need to start to believe that. Do you know how much God loves your kids? Some of us, we've experienced God's love for us, but we've never experienced God's love for our kids yet. God loves your kids more than you. God loves your kids so much more than you. And you, I know you love your kids, right? You do. And I know you're sacrificed. You're willing to lay your life down, a lot of us, for our children. But God loves them even more than that. We have to learn how to trust God with the lives of our kids. And that's number one. So training needs a purpose. We need to know the way. The way is Jesus. We mirror that. And we pray and we try and bring our kids alongside of us. But there's nothing that we can do to get them there. All we can do is be a mirror of God's love and walk in the way ourselves. Number two is that training needs a trainer. All right? Training needs a trainer. And you see this all the time because people hire trainers. They hire coaches. They hire, hire performance consultants. They hire people to help them train to become the best versions of themselves. And I think it's interesting because the people who oftentimes invest the most into growing themselves are the people who uh, are already doing a really good job. Have you ever noticed this? Like, like the people who have like, like, like fitness coaches at the gym are already like pretty big, Right? It's like, you could probably be doing that yourself. And they're like, yeah, I do this on the side, but I got to have somebody come alongside of me. Why? Because when we're training, we need somebody to be beside us, to encourage us, to push us forward, to help us be disciplined, to actually go forward. Training needs a trainer. In order to train your children effectively, you need to be training yourself as well. Right? Are you actually growing your, in your relationship with Jesus? Or have you put that on hold to grow in your relationship with your kids? It's like, no, I, I'm busy. It's like, I know you're busy, but, you know, I, I forget who said this, but they said, uh, I think it was like C.S. Lewis. He said, I'm, I'm too busy to not, pr- uh, I'm too busy to not pray. Does that make sense? Something like that. He basically was saying, I need to pray because I need to pray. I, I don't have enough time to not pray, basically, is the thought. And so in our lives, we can't say, I know I'm, I've put my relationship with Jesus on hold. Why? Because I'm, I need to make sure that I'm taking care of my kids. You're going to be a better parent the closer you are to Jesus. The closer that you are to Jesus, the closer you are to training yourself, your children need a trainer. They need somebody to disciple them. They need somebody to do it. And a lot of us, we've we've put the responsibility of training and discipleship on our schools and our churches when the responsibility to train and disciple your kids is not our job, it's your job. If you want to grow your kids to be followers of Jesus, they come to church maybe two hours a week. They're at your house a lot more than that. We need to take back the responsibility of discipleship and start training our kids in the way that they should go. If you're too busy to disciple your kids, you need to start to let some things go. If you're too busy to pray with your children, if you're too busy to teach your kids how to read the Bible, you need to start letting some things go in your life. One of the primary things as a, as a responsibility of a parent, that's probably the biggest responsibility you're ever going to have. 
It's your responsibility. It's my responsibility to raise and train my child. And we will come alongside you. Of course, the church will come alongside you. Friends and family will come alongside you. You're not doing it by yourself. But you need to be training yourself. This is what it says in Titus 2, verse 7 to 8. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and seriousness of your teaching. Teach the truth so that your teaching can't be criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. You know who's watching you more than anyone else? Your kids. <laughs> and sometimes I wish Jane wasn't watching. You know what I'm talking about? It's like, it's like, and it's sometimes like the, the dumbest things. Like she'll like spill rice on the floor or water. It's like, it's water. And I'm like, get frustrated. I'm like, why'd you spill the water? I'm like, it's just water, man. You know what I mean? Like we get so frustrated and so upset, but our kids are watching us. And then I'm like, Jane, why are you getting so frustrated? She's like, she doesn't say it, but it's like, she's looking at me like, you taught me how to do it. You taught me how to get mad when, when I spill. You taught me these things. And I look at myself and I think, I got to grow myself. I have to train myself in order to be the parent, to actually be the person that can disciple my family as best as I can. I need to take the responsibility back for me. Our kids are watching us. You're the trainer. You're the, dis you're the discipler. <laughs> discipler. I don't know. Makes sense to me. You're the discipler. So you better be working on growing yourself. You better be working on growing yourself in your relationship with Jesus and praying for your kids constantly. Do not stop praying for your kids. Your kids may want nothing to do with you right now. Do not stop praying for them. You know, some of us, were in a situation where we're co-parenting. Do not stop praying for the other parent. Do not stop praying for the other parent. I know it's really hard when there's broken relationships, but do not stop praying. You know, you are getting trained and discipled by Jesus, and our role is to train and disciple our kids to do the same. And in Ephesians 6, 4, it says this, Fathers, do not provoke your children to, to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. What are you provoking in your kids? This is a big question that I think about. As I wrote this, I was like, man, what am I provoking my, my child to do? Am I provoking her to do the right things or do the wrong things? Am I provoking her to anger or am I provoking her to peace? And what am I provoking my child to do? And it says that the instruction comes from the Lord, right? So the instruction that we get from the Lord, our responsibility is to use that to instruct our children. So if we don't even know the instructions, if we've never read the instruction manual, which is the scriptures, if we haven't read it, good luck. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging when you don't even know what the instruction is. Some of us are going through parenting. We're blind to what we're supposed to be doing. It's not our own instruction. It's his instruction. How do you get this instruction for yourself? You read the scripture. Spend time in prayer. Don't stop praying for your kids. Don't stop praying for your spouse. Even if you're in a co-parenting situation, do not stop praying. Don't stop pursuing Jesus. You are the first example they see of what it means to follow Jesus. It's you. Again, we need to take our responsibility back when it comes to training our kids. And then the last thought I have today is that training needs discipline. If you ever want to train for something, you need discipline, right? We talked about it. You want to train for the hot dog eating contest, it's going to take some training. I googled the world record hot dogs in 10 minutes. I'm telling you, does anyone know the answer? I couldn't believe, 10 minutes, right? 76 hot dogs. I'm like, some of us are like, I've never eaten 76 hot dogs in my entire life, let alone in 10 minutes. Now, I got so curious because I don't think the human body naturally should eat 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes, right? Like, I don't think that's normal. The guy who, the guy who ate these is like my size. Like, it's not like he's, like, he's just like a normal, you know? 76 hot dogs. And so I researched, how do you train for that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, 
That's so, such an odd thing that takes training. How do you train for hot dogs? What he does is six months before, because it's in, it's in June, I believe, June or July, six months before, right after the holidays, he starts to diet and work out. And then, and then what he does is, is, is his training for a preparation day takes, takes a week. And so what it does is it starts with two days of a water and lemon fast. So he takes two days to fast just lemon and water. Then he goes into his basement and he has lights and he has um, uh, like a PA system playing music really loud and lights in his face because he's trying to recreate the competition, right? And so he's in his basement. I, I don't know if he's alone or if he's with people. Like I, It's kind of weird, but he, he just sits there and just eats hot dogs. And then what he does is he like, he, 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 he says that, that it's, um, I want to get this right. I think it's 15 to 16 pounds of food that he eats. That's more than like my baby weighs. You know what I mean? Like it's unbelievable. And so what the, he, he literally goes, it's not natural for the human body to, for the jaw to take this much food and this much water. It's a gallon of water and 15 pounds of food. So he has to train his like whole body to actually take this. It takes six months of preparation to eat 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes. What a guy who's disciplined for a weird reason. But training needs discipline. You're never going to get to the point, even as your kids, you're never going to see your kids get to the point where God wants them to be without discipline. And I know discipline in our society, in our culture, in our lives is a very, sometimes it's a controversial topic, discipline. Right? Because there's a lot of different opinions on what it should look like and how it should be. And I'm not going to go into how to discipline. But I want to go through two, two, uh, two verses. Proverbs 13, verse 24 says this. It says, those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. And those who love their children care enough to discipline them. And then Proverbs 29, 17 says this. Discipline your children and they will give you peace of mind. And they will make your heart glad. You know, these are all great verses. We love these, these verses, right? Especially as parents. Especially the one about sparing the rod. We're like, son, the Bible teaches that if I spare the rod, I hate you. You know I love you, so here's your 39 lashes. <laughs> you know, discipline is tricky as parents. It's really tricky. Especially when you have a situation where you and your spouse disagree on this, the way you should discipline. That's hard. Some of us, we think we're disciplining too soft or disciplining too hard. But I think the most important thing to do when it comes to discipline is get on the same page, the same page with your spouse on it. And realize what discipline is for and also realize what discipline is not for. So what I want to do is I want to go through three things that discipline is not. Number one, discipline is not a way to humiliate your kids. It's not. I think on some of us, we've been in moments where this is... This happened to us where our, the discipline came in a form of humiliation, where we were uh, making our child or we were made to feel stupid or we, we felt unloved or we felt less than, we felt inferior. Discipline is not a way to humiliate your child. Discipline is not telling your child that they're an idiot. It's a way to guide them to the better path. And in Psalm 103 verse 13 says this, the Lord is like a father to his children, listen to this, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Demeaning and humiliating your children won't guide them to a better path, right? Because what, it what it'll do is it'll teach them not to trust you and they'll try harder to hide their behavior next time because they're scared that they're going to humiliate them. So they're going to do their best to try and hide their behavior better. Those of us who have been kids, we know what that's like. How do I sneak out in a safer, safe, no, safe is irrelevant, my bad. How do I sneak out in a, quieter fashion, right? Can I put pillows under my blanket to pretend my body's there? It's like the great escape, right? Like Alcatraz, you know? But that's what humiliation will do. It's just going to train your kids to not trust you and do whatever they can to try and hide their behavior from you better. We, we are supposed to be as parents tender and compassionate towards our kids, have empathy rather than push them into places of humiliation. So that's number one is is uh, discipline is not a way to humiliate. Number two is discipline is, is not a way to show dominance. You know, discipline, just because you're bigger, stronger, wiser than your kids doesn't mean you need to prove it all the time. Doesn't mean you need to prove, like, look how strong I am. And I've caught myself, right? Jane's like trying to push me or like pull me. I'm like, I'm stronger than you. And I'm like, don't say that. 
guide her, you know. But our responsibilities, yes, you're stronger, yes, you're wiser, yes, you're bigger, of course. But our responsibility is to use your strength, use your wisdom to protect your kids, not hurt your kids. It's to, to protect our kids. It says, if you go back to that verse we went through earlier, the Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Some of us, we fear our, we fear our parents because we know how much that, 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 if, that if someone else does something to us, they're, they're going to go fight a kid at the playground. You know, discipline is not a way to show dominance. Because God, you know what God is? He's bigger than me. He's stronger than me. He's wiser than me. Yet he doesn't go walk around proving it to me all the time. You know what God does? He sits with me in my brokenness and is compassionate and loving towards me. You know, Proverbs 3, verse 11 to 12 says this, My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline. And don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves. Just as a father corrects his child in whom he delights. We don't reject God's discipline because we know we need it. And we know it makes us stronger and we know that it makes us better. We correct our children. We discipline our children because we can see them more in their life. And we see it more than we see more than them and we see before them. And so we walk around in a form of discipline to guide and, and move our kids closer to the path. To bring them back to the path. And then I think the third thing discipline is not is that the is is discipline is not a way to let out your anger i think one of the most dangerous places that we can get as parents is a place where we discipline our sims our we discipline our children out of anger and not of love we discipline our, our kids because we're just so angry with them and we let our anger take the best of us i think this is one of the most dangerous places that we can get as as parents is when anger is our motivator not love if anger is what's motivating you to discipline, it's probably not the right space. If in your heart love is to guide them, to correct them, to protect them, to bring them back, that's really what should be motivating our discipline, not anger. Yes, our kids are going to make us angry, like very angry. Like very angry. <laughs> but don't let anger be what motivates you to discipline. You know, we can't be just reactionary. We've got to be trying to be calm in these moments. And James 1, verse 19 to 20 says this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. Let us be slow to anger because anger causes us to say and do things that we know we shouldn't. And I think we all have moments. In fact, I think that discipline is actually a way to show God's love. You know, three things discipline is. Number one is discipline is a way to guide. Discipline is a way to correct. And discipline is a way to protect. This is the point of discipline is to move our kids forward on the right path, to bring them back, course correction, to the right spot, in the right direction, to protect them from the dangers on the way and to correct their behavior to help them become the best version of themselves they can be. You know, in shepherds, if you look at what shepherds use their rods to do and their staffs to do, is to guide, correct, and protect. And, and you see this in Psalm 23, 4. It says this. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You know, every child needs discipline. Every human needs discipline. We all need it. But discipline is less about punishment, I think, and less about punishment and pain and more about correction and protection and guidance. How do we help our children go back to the right path? How do we help our children have some behavior modification so they can become, they can make better decisions, right? Like, of course, we need to discipline our kids. You know, we might not want our kids to have their phones in their rooms, not because we hate them, but because we know the dangers that, private internet access can have you know i think it was just in you know, a few months ago we saw that, that 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 girl who got kidnapped here in edmonton if you remember that story because she had met somebody online and they had met and he took her down into the united states from edmonton like this happened in our city you know we we don't take away electronics from our kids because we hate them they think that right They're like i hate you you're like i really don't think you do but they say it and it's not easy when, you're, when your kids are angry at you, but you know what's best for them. And they don't know it yet. You 
know, some kids, they get grounded and it's the end of the world, right? It's like, what do you mean I can't have my phone, right? How will my boyfriend know I'm okay? What if my Snapchat streak ends? <laughs> it's horrible. You're the worst. It's like, <laughs> whoa, you know? But this is what sometimes kids do. Do you know who also does this? We as parents. When we don't get our way. It's like, you do what I want you to do. And they're like, no! You're like, you better do it, right? You know, every kid needs discipline, but I think every kid needs it in a different way. You know, some kids, you take away their dessert because they didn't eat their meal, and it's like they're all of a sudden a prisoner of war. You know? There's like, literally, it's like the plates touch the ceiling. There's mashed potatoes all over the ceiling. And you're like, this is why you're not getting ice cream. <laughs> but every kid needs discipline in a different way. I don't think we can approach discipline with our kids all with the same thing. Because every kid is different. They experience love different and they experience hate different. You know, and our responsibility really, I think when it comes to discipline, is know our kids. Get to know your kid and know what it is that's going to help them make better decisions. You know, our job as parents is, when it comes to discipline, has to be to guide, correct, and protect our children. You know, when, when, when he talks about, you know, there's, you know, your rod and your staff, they come for me. You know, I think our kids need to be in a place where they feel safe around us. That yes, we sometimes take away things, sometimes we discipline them, but all of it has to come from a place where they know you love them, I think. Like where they know like you genuinely, like your best, their best interest is in your mind as well. Like, like you're doing it to make sure they're okay. And sometimes it just comes by having a conversation, being like, this is what's happening and this is why. This is why we're taking away your phone. Do you understand the why? Like, do you get it? Because like, we love you. That's why. It's not because we hate you. It's not because we don't want you to play Flappy Bird in the middle of the night. That like, we don't care about Flappy Bird, right? We want to make sure that you're okay. That's really, I think, as parents, where discipline has to become what it is. And I think, again, each kid requires different discipline. You know, being a parent is hard. I, I, like, it's beautiful too. Like, don't, for those of you who don't have kids, don't be like, oh, I'm never having a kid, like, in my life. This is horrible right now. Kids are amazing. I, I wouldn't change it for the world. It's hard though. I think that one of the most important roles you'll ever have in your life over being a CEO or being a carpenter is being a father, being a mother. Our role as parents is to train up our kids in the way they should go. That's our main goal. And so really we have to know the purpose, where we're going, what's the way. And then train them in that way. Train them in Jesus, in the purpose that they should go. Again, the purpose is not your satisfaction. It's not your self-esteem. It's not your love. It's Jesus. He is the purpose. He is the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say you are the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can only come to the Father through me. I think if we boil this all down to one main thought, it would be this. The main role of parents is to be an example of what it means to follow Jesus. Really, if we boil everything down, I think this is it. The main role of parents is to be an example of what it means to follow Jesus. Because again, we're the first person that they see as a follower of Jesus. They get their habits when it comes to Jesus. They get their thoughts. They get their ideas. They get their beliefs from us. They get their responses from us. And that's our main role of parents is to be an example of what it means to follow Jesus. That's it. Show his love. Show his compassion. Show his grace. Show his gentleness. Show his forgiveness. Show his humility. That is the best training that your child can get is when you're following the instructions of the Lord and teaching them to do the same. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for us because uh, I know that parenting's a journey, whether you're a child or not. Sometimes when you're the child, you gotta sometimes parent your parents, which isn't easy. But it's hard. And so I wanna pray for us because I know it's challenging, but I believe 
But the closer that we get to Jesus, I think we talked a little bit about this even last week. We talked about marriage in our interview. The closer that we get to Jesus, the better we are going to be at being parents and being spouses and being single, all of it. Better friends we're going to be the closer we are to Jesus. That's the main thing. So, Father, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that you are a good father. We thank you that you are taking care of us. We thank you that you are protecting us, that you are guiding us, that you are correcting us. God, we pray that you give us patience. We pray that you give us courage. We pray that you give us peace. And we pray that as we go forward with our children, God, show us how to love them better. Show us how to be an example of your kindness and your love better. And God, we thank you that you're, you're the one guiding us. And God, help us train our, up our kids in the way they should go. In Jesus' name, amen.